Hello, I'm John Thorne from Thorny Motorsport, and this is a slightly different video for us because we're not talking about McLarens, we're talking about electric vehicles, EVs. Now, some time ago, about a year or so ago, we did a video, there's a link up there, talking about the Jaguar I-Pace, where we looked at the vehicle, and we were pretty convinced that it was the next vehicle for us to look at. Uh, we even got to the point of speaking to Jaguar and the head of the um, former e-team regarding their car and the road car ideas we had for it and it progressed very well. We don't have a Jaguar I-Pace I'm afraid. Um, following that time with the Jaguar which we were super impressed with the car and the performance in, in pretty much every way but we didn't buy one. In fact we still have our X6M but the reason why we didn't buy one was not to do with the car it was to do entirely with the network. In a short time we had the car for, we borrowed one for a while, we came to the conclusion that around about 150 to 200 miles range simply isn't enough for a car for our requirements. And whilst it may suit a lot of people, it didn't suit us. What we also came to understand was that the charging network, which the iPACE and a lot of EVs in the UK rely on, is simply not good enough yet to survive in terms of the kind of use you'd expect for someone moving from an, a normal car into an EV. It simply isn't there. Now, we've done a lot of research before. Now, I may be doing car tuning now, but I used to be an equities analyst, so I look into this quite detailed. And the conclusion I came to was that the electric vehicle infrastructure network is simply years behind Tesla's, which is why, with a bit of work, and despite our criticism of the original cars we drove a year or so ago, we now have a Tesla Model 3 performance. That's it there. And it's sat in here getting a software update. And that's partly the reason why we bought the Tesla and why we have committed quite strongly to the Tesla tuning market specifically, is that Tesla are specifically head and shoulders above everybody else in the UK in terms of charging network. The infrastructure of superchargers and the charging network they have put billions of pounds into is so far ahead above anybody else on the EV environment it's, it's incomparable. Now things will change. Uh, we had a conversation with BP Chargemaster and they said they're rolling their system out, but even in their admission, they are still multiple years behind Tesla in terms of the charging network. So with that in mind, we reviewed our decision and we went back and test drove all the Teslas again. So I drove a three, uh, an X uh, and uh, a Model S. And we, after driving all the cars, uh, have decided that we have bought this Model 3 Performance. Now this is a long range performance version. Um, and we picked that specifically because we think it's the most car-like in terms of the car for Tesla. And also it's by far the most common car coming out because of its retail price. We paid 54,000 for this brand new. Now, normally we buy second-hand cars. Um, we don't like to buy new cars at all because of depreciation. We learned that with McLaren's. Um, but really what we found was that Tesla's, because of their supply model, uh, and because of their lack of dealership model, which is what's one of the best things about them, um, hold the money well. Uh, we almost bought one that was 52,000 pounds with 18,000 miles on the clock. Uh, so <laughs> clearly a new one made more sense for us. Now, one of the aspects about the Tesla I was critical of was the build quality. When I road tested the first Model 3 a year or so ago, it literally fell apart around me. I slammed the door and the wing rear landed in my lap. Uh, it wasn't a good sign. However, we road tested some more since, and clearly, bear in mind we've put our own money behind our mouth here, uh, the new models are pretty well built. Now, they're not high-end Audi or BMW, but they're certainly mid-range Audi or BMW. So yes, they're quite expensive for what they are in terms of quality, but overall, they're actually very good. Uh, our car has been rattle-free, squeak and free completely. Um, we've only looked at a thousand miles on it so far, but really the actual build quality of it was pretty good, and we're quite impressed with it. Even the paint isn't bad. Uh, I'm used to BMW paint, which is pretty woeful. Uh, the Tesla paint, arguably speaking on our Model 3, is actually better. Now, what are our plans for the car? First of all, um, they are based on what we think we can improve the car for. Now, we're not going to touch power. We're going to dyno this car fairly soon, but we don't have any inclination or desire to get into the power upgrade model. Tesla really have that lined up and nailed down pretty tight, and it's not something that we have any great expertise on, so we're not going to offer it. What we're going to concentrate on is the vehicle dynamics, how it handles, how it brakes. Sometimes the aerodynamics are going to change as well. And our plan here really is to 
literally spend a lot of money, <laughs> sadly. And we're going to go and look at what's available in the market from lots of different suppliers. And where we can't find something we're not impressed with, we're going to develop our own. Now, the Model 3 already handles pretty well. Um, it's family well, really. Um, but end of the day, it's a heavy car. It's 2.2 tons. Now, whilst it carries that weight low in the batteries, which is good, it does mean that the initial turning, initial handling process is a little bit woolly. So whilst it holds its roll position once it's cornered because of the weight being low down, the center of gravity, the initial uh, roll of the car is too high. It is quite a roly-poly car in that regard. So once it rolls, then it stops and it grips. So what we're going to concentrate initially on is handling. So we're going to look at springs, suspension kits, all kinds of things we can develop or look to buy from someone else who's done. And our research has started now. We are running a test set on this car right now. The first thing we did when we bought the car was fit a kit. So we'll spend some time um, going through what we think in terms of handling. We're going to do some dyno work on it. We're going to look at some of the aerodynamics so we can improve some of those as well. Um, and then see how we get on. And then widen that out to the Model S and to Model X as well. But the Model 3 is definitely the, the mainstay of what we're going to try going further forward. Now, we're going to start some different videos in this one. Uh, we'll mix them with the McLaren video, obviously. And we'll do some back-to-back. -back. Uh, when the weather is better or COVID allows us, we're going to try and uh, dyno uh, drag strip racing between R720, which runs 800 horsepower, our GT4R, which is in the background, um, which runs 650 horsepower, and of course the Model 3, where you can say in horsepower terms, but it's an electric vehicle. It's just a different way of measuring them. So this is our first of our videos. Um, as you can see, we've already dechromed it. So we've just taken the chrome off it uh, by wrapping it with a, a gloss black, which we'll take some pictures of as well. Um, and really that's just a personal choice. Um, I'm pretty sure Tesla are bringing out a dechrome option now because I view chrome is a bit old. Another thing about it is in terms of the ownership perspective of it. Now we can go about the electric vehicle market being green environment. I'm not going to get involved in that conversation because to be honest, I don't think electric vehicles offer any more in terms of environmentally, other than the fact they don't emit gases in a town or an environment. In terms of building an EV is not that much greener than the ice, in my opinion. No, no, I have to be convinced otherwise. The, really, the reason why we've gone to the EV market is because we're forced to. The UK government, as in governments around the world, are forcing us towards electric vehicles, either by tax incentives or by uh, emission zones, etc. And for our perspective as well, we have four or five hundred McLaren customers on our books. Around about 10% of them have a Tesla. Uh, it's, it's an interesting mix between having a supercar and having an EV as a daily car. So we thought we'd, we'd push forward for it. So really, our first plan is obviously dechrome it. We're going to do some work in terms of the suspension side of it, and we'll start rolling this out in terms of market and see how we, we get on. So it'll be some months yet before we go further forward, but we've been going some time now. Um, hopefully, you'll find this interesting. We will do a series of videos based on what we find and how we develop the car, uh, along with some track work, because we're going to take it to Silverstone next week, so we get on with there. Uh, and, and generally, just have enjoyed the car. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you're interested in what you see we do. Um, talk to you soon. Cheers.